It's been over 75 years since the end of World War II, but the stories of the brave soldiers who fought on the fields continue to fascinate us. In this video, we will take a closer look at the story of World War II soldiers found in the frozen ice. On November 18, 1942, four men were aboard a routine navigation training flight which departed Mather Field, California. Their AT-7 navigator aircraft carried about five hours of fuel. The name of the pilot was 2nd Lieutenant William Art Gamber. His three students were aviation cadets John W. Mortensen, Ernest G. Munn, and Leo Mastonen. According to the Bureau of Aircraft Accidents Archives, during a training mission, the twin-engine aircraft hit the slope of Mount Mendel located in the Darwin Glacier, northeast of Fresno. The wreck site was not located until 1947. When the aircraft and crew failed to return to their base, a rescue search began. This search went on for several weeks with a negative outcome. It was called off after one month. The war continued and then ended. The crew were listed as missing. But in 1947, that would change. Four. UC Berkeley students found the wreck. One of the students guided an air-sea recovery team from Hamilton Field in Marin County, California, to the wreck site in late September, 1947. Engine identification tags confirmed that it was definitely the missing aircraft but no bodies were recovered. In 1948, a team of soldiers from Foot Lewis in Washington returned to the glacier but was also unable to recover any remains. On October 15, 1948, a casket was placed in the Grave 43, Section F, Golden Gate National Cemetery. Supposedly it contained the bodies of the four flyers lost with Flight 41-21079. Though, it was clearly stated in the after-action report of the search party, that no bodies had been found. Only one small piece of frozen flesh became the group's burial. On October 15, 2005, the glacier had melted sufficiently to reveal the body of one of the crew members, Leo Mastonen. Two hikers discovered a glacier entombed corpse wearing a flight suit with blonde, wavy hair and a tattered sweater. Nearby was also an unopened parachute. Digging out the airmen wasn't an easy task. The mummified remains were recovered later in the same month by a team from JPAC and transported to the U.S. Army Central Identification Laboratory, Silhai, in Hawaii where a DNA test was conducted against family reference samples volunteered by the maternal relatives of the crew member. At the laboratory, scientists picked through his modest personal effects. A broken comb, the pen, six pennies, one nickel, four dimes and three address books that were illegible. Most unusual was a scrap of paper they fed into a high-resolution video spectral comparator, discovering what appears to be a body limerick that read in part, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, this the girls all know. The parachute on his back was intact and looked usable. As for the corroded nameplate, anthropologists used different sources of light to photograph the plate until teasing four letters from the scarred metal, E-O-A-M. According to the New York Times, one of the dead men was listed as Leo M. Mastonen, age 22. Close to the nameplate, but with a different middle initial. His death report listed his emergency contacts as his parents, Arvid and Anna Mastonen, Finnish immigrants on Maple Street in Brainerd, Minnesota. A piece of bone generated mitochondrial DNA, but for a successful match, a sample has to be drawn from a maternal relative. The lone relatives of the airman named Mastonen were the wife and daughters of his brother, in Jacksonville, Florida. Their DNA would not be of help. 
But relatives of the other three men, John Mortensen, Ernest Munn, and the pilot, William Gamber, were found. None matched the airman's DNA. Finally, anthropologists found that Mastonen's name had been misspelt on his nameplate all along. The A should have been M. The autopsy on Mastonen showed that his injuries were so severe that he would have died instantly upon impact. Mastonen's identity was revealed on February 4, 2006. He died at the age of 22 and was buried in his hometown on March 24, 2006. In August 2007, another frozen body was found in the area of the wreck by Peter Steckel, an author conducting research for a book he was writing about the missing aircraft. About 100 feet from where Mastonen's body was found, Steckel discovered the remains of a second man emerging from a melting glacier. At first he thought it was a tree. As I got closer and closer, I noticed what turned out to be a gold ring on his left ring finger, he said. After his body was discovered, the remains were taken to JPAC, at Hickam Air Force Base in Oahu, Hawaii. DNA retrieved from Munn's family matched samples from the remains. Munn's sister, 87-year-old Jean and her two other surviving sisters, Sarah Zayer, 85 and Lois Shriver, 83 were notified by military officials. Munn was the oldest of four children. He did well in school and watched over his three little sisters, his family told CNN in 2005. Recurring what she remembered about her brother, one of the sisters told CNN that he was her idol. He was tall and good-looking. And when he walked in, they said, here comes the blonde bomber. And I would say, that's my brother. Munn enlisted in the army at the age of 23. He kissed his sisters goodbye but he never returned. On March 10, 2008 the U.S. military confirmed by DNA test, these remains belonged to Ernest Munn. He was buried May 17, 2008, in the family plot in Holly Memorial Gardens in Pleasant Grove, Ohio. With two of the missing airmen now identified, authorities continue their search for the others. As for Peter Steckel the author, he vowed to return to the crash site again to continue his research. I don't want to hold out false hope for the Gamber and Mortensen families, but I also don't want to give up on searching until I'm confident there is nothing else to find. He said. The discovery of two World War II U.S. soldiers, who were preserved in frozen ice for over 70 years, is a fascinating event that provides us with a glimpse into the history of one of the deadliest conflicts in human history. The discovery is a remarkable reminder of the sacrifices that were made by these brave men and women who fought for their country during the war. The fact that these two soldiers were able to be identified and brought back to their families after so many years is a testament to the power of science and technology. The work of the researchers and the forensic experts who were able to use DNA testing and other techniques to identify the soldiers is truly remarkable. This discovery also highlights the importance of remembering and honoring those who fought and died for our freedom. As time passes, it becomes increasingly important to preserve the memory of those who gave their lives for their country. It is a poignant reminder that we must never forget the sacrifices that were made during the war.